Hello, my friend, and welcome to Fear Into Faith. This is our Miracles, Signs, and Wonders edition. And all I got to say is, you better hang on for the ride today, because I have with me to interview one of, I, it's not one, I'm going to just say it. It is the most incredible story um, that I feel like I've ever heard involving, first of all, a plane crash. So we have a gentleman with us that was in a plane crash. Not only did he survive, but also God sent an angel to comfort him through the night and so many other miracles wrapped around this one thing that happened. So welcome. Hang on. I'm Summer Day. I get to be your host. And with me today is the one and only Dr. Charlie Fowler. Hello. Praise God. We're glad to be with you. I'm so excited to interview you. Now, I actually got to interview you for our Bible TV show. Thanks for coming on that. And we touched base a little bit on your miracle, but this is the day to really dive in and talk about your miracle, my friends. So first of all, just tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from? Well, I, I was born in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Grew up in Panama City Beach, Florida. And, and uh, we're living in, in, we live in Grand Ridge, Florida now. And what is it you do, my friend? We evangelize uh, the nation and go around the world sometimes. Yeah, just a little bit, right? You're, you're a preacher. A How long you been doing that? Uh, going on 57 years. Just a little, just slightly, just 57. My wife has, my wife has heard me preach over 17,000 times and only missed one service. Your wife has heard you preach 17,000 times, only missed one, one service. Wow. One service. How long have you been married? Uh, 53 years. 53 years. And Almost 54. Some, almost 54. And you have some kids. I know that. Yes. Two, son and a daughter. Nice. Because we've had Dr. Joshua Fowler, your son. And um, so you're a fourth generation preacher, right? Because Dr. Yes. Fowler's a, the, the Joshua is a fifth generation preacher. That's right. Share a little bit. Because I, you know, I, before I met you guys, I didn't really know there were people that traveled all over the world and were preachers the way that you do it. So how often are you traveling? Well, right now we're slowed down a little bit as far as my wife's has been done. Recouping some, but we're going just mostly weekends. About six weeks at a time, we'll go and come back and our motor home and come come back again. But God's been doing a lot of great things on weekends. So We've good. Uh, I used to preach uh, close to 400, 500 services a year. And this last year, we, we just did uh, like two and three services a week. So, okay, so but you God's used been good. Four or 500 a year. So you know. Yeah, sometimes you used to. You not only have your own miracle story, you're a man who has watched and seen the hand of God move on countless miracles, huh? A lot of miracles take place, especially since the plane crash. A lot of people have been healed by sharing their testimony. Well, let's get into it because, you know, I feel like we want to take up every minute of this entire interview right now with you and what we got going on. Um, how long ago did this happen? It actually happened December the 1st, 1986. Okay. So almost 37 years ago. Wow. 37 years ago. And let's just go right to that day. So tell us what was going on that day. Well, that day was a uh, dormant day for me. Really, I got a call. I needed to end up going to fly to Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, on business for our church. We had two Christian schools, and I had to go there on business. I had to pick up three businessmen in Pensacola. The weather was so bad. It was terrible. Thunderstorms everywhere. And so I had to fly. Of course, I went to the airport, checked out my plane. Got on the plane and uh, okay, had we got prayer. to slow this down for a second. So it was your plane. You were the pilot. Yes, you were plane. flying three businessmen. Okay. Yes, I, I went, had to fly to Pensacola to pick them up. I flew from Panama City, and uh, the weather was so bad. I had to fly instruments, of course, and uh, shot the instrument approach into Pensacola. Landed, picked up these three businessmen. Now they had never been in a thunderstorm before flying, but uh, they got on the plane and uh, we had prayer and uh, got on clearance and took off. And we're flying to Meridian, Mississippi, and nobody had to tell them in to pray then. I mean, they got serious about that praying stuff, uh, being thrown, thrown this way and that way, and uh, had a six-passenger plane at that time. And uh, since then, we've had some 10-passenger planes. God's been good that way. But, but that six-passenger plane, uh, we were pretty pretty loaded up there with those three men and some equipment. Got onto the Meridian, shot the approach there, and those fellows were so glad to be on the ground. It was just something. But uh, anyway, when we uh, stayed all day in business and got back to the airport, Meridian, it was terrible weather still. And the worst type flying, the most dangerous flying, is flying at night in thunderstorms. So we had to pray again and take off and uh, and uh, fly back to Pensacola and landed safely. These three men were so glad to get out of the plane. They were just so glad. So I called my wife, said, baby, I'll be home in about uh, 30 minutes to fill in the plane with fuel. 
So I, they got plane fuel, fuel and got in the plane and after checking it out and had prayer and uh, and took off. Worst weather I've ever flown in. I mean, summer did it was terrible. Ever, time. Did you ever, ever think for one second, this is the worst weather I've flown in. Maybe I shouldn't go home tonight. <laughs> well, uh, when you when you got things to do, you just don't think about some things like that. You just need to go, you know, get, get your wife and had a lot of things going. But anyway, I took off in that bad weather and uh, there was time my plane was thrown a thousand feet straight up and a thousand feet straight down. It was a it was a bad flight. But I reached the Panama City airspace and received my instrument clearance to land and uh, everything was going great. And all of a sudden on the approach, uh, the instruments on my plane went out. I mean, just went out. So then I was in real bad trouble. I declared an emergency and the radar controller said, well, out of nowhere, just a hundred percent stopped working. Just, just gone. Just stopped working. No explanation. Then you don't know if you're upside down, you don't know if you're right side up, you're in bad trouble. So I declared an emergency and the, uh, the radar controller said, no, we'll climb three, two, zero back around to uh, 2000 feet, clear for the second approach. And I tried to explain to him, my instruments were all gone. And he said, well, maybe they'll come back on. And I thought, well, you know, that's that's kind of that's that's crazy. I, I'm about to get killed. Bring you tell me this is come back on. But I made the the, the circle and uh, tried to get back, and um, it was just really bad. But uh, all of a sudden, something terrible, terrible happened. The right engine on the plane went out, oh, and the wow. instruments had come back on for a few moments. But the instruments went out again after that engine went out, and then I was in the worst kind of trouble. I mean, I didn't know if I was upside down, right side up. Didn't know if I was diving, didn't know if I was climbing. Cockpit completely black. It was just terrible. And so in moments I was crashing. I call it to say it was, oh God, oh God. But thank God he's a present help in time of trouble. And I was crashing. And they said I cut tops out of pine trees for almost a quarter of a mile. You when cut I came pine to... trees down? So you were just, you yeah. were yeah. cutting the pine Top, trees down. Yes. Wow. And when the plane came to stop, the whole right side of the plane had been torn off. And uh, my feet and legs were underneath the dash of the plane and uh, actually under the rudder pedals. And I was lying beneath the pine tree uh, that I, it was so big, I couldn't move, you know, of course. And uh, so you got it was, it was, partially under the plane and then a uh, tree. Yeah, a big old pine tree across my chest and the cables and wires were across me. And so I was in the worst kind of trouble. I mean, it was it was terrible. And uh, all I could say remember was. remember all this? Like, do you remember yes. the plane hitting all the trees and everything? Yes, yes, I remember that. And I uh, didn't ever pass out. It was amazing how God let me stay awake. They All the uh, people at the rescue scene said if I. If I'd have ever passed out or if I'd have gone into shock, I would have, I would have died, of course. But all night long, I... You never went good. into shock, even with all that going on? No, I didn't go into shock. I just... And I was torn to pieces. I was, I was, you know, praying to God. And uh, I really quote the scripture, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 118, 17. I quote that scripture. 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I love it. All night, I declared that scripture. And actually... As I, I lay there, I, my, my actually, I didn't know this. Sure, I knew I was hurting more pain I'd ever been in before in life. My left foot had been torn off. Part of my right foot was missing. My right hip went out the back of my buttocks and crushed on the ground. Uh, Your my left foot crushed, had been torn completely off. Had just a little bit of the heel cord holding it on. So, and uh, all I, so I was losing a lot of blood. My ribs had been broken and crushed. My nose was torn off lying over here. Oh my gosh, I was okay, in, so... We're going to stop right there and we're going to take our first break. I feel like that's a great place to stop. <laughs> so we'll be right back right after this. Science Fiction Fans, Volume 3 of the Richard series by Michael W. Hickman won a big award. Voted Best Sci-Fi Space Opera for 2023 by AudiobookReviewer.com. And now, Volume 4 is available. Richard, War Erupts by Michael W. Hickman. Science Fiction lovers, read or listen to the complete audiobook series at Audible.com, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or RichardBooks.com. In a world where challenges echo, one woman's resilience becomes a symphony of triumph. Jennifer's story is a spectacle of transformation. Abandoned and scared, she rises, turning pain into power. This book is your guide with the tools she used. An epic narrative of hope, resilience, and breaking free. Breaking the Bonds, a book by author Jennifer Marcus. Available on Amazon. Well, welcome back, my friend. We're here with Dr. Charlie Fowler and the most incredible story I have literally ever heard. And, and he's got the whole thing in a book. I had to read the whole book. I interviewed him once and just was like, no way. What is this? 
and then read the whole book and then still keep learning more things about this story. So let's go right back into the moment. You said you're laying there, your nose is over here, your foot's hanging on by a thread. You've got the thing crushed, your organs crushed, playing on you. Then what happens? I lay there as I was praying and uh, all of a sudden, and I, I, God just came on the scene in a very special way. I, I began to pray for my family. I knew that my my family had to be in, in turmoil because I was I was not home yet and they should be there. But I and all of a sudden my pager, you know, back in those days they didn't have, didn't have mobile phones. We had pagers. I yeah. called it a beeper, oh. and it'd been thrown about fifteen feet from me. And here I was praying for my family, and that pager goes beep 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 beep, and I heard my son say, "Daddy, please call home. Daddy, please call home." See a, a news flash had come on the television that a that a plane had crashed. They knew a plane had crashed. And uh, my well, my wife saw that on the screen. She said, that's your daddy. He said, no, mama, that's not daddy. I'll, I'll call him. And he said, daddy, please call home. But, but he and his voice gave me the spark I needed. I mean, all the devils in hell would not kill me then, you know. And, yeah. uh, and then the, and then the, the, the page would be just static in silence. And, and uh, then I just, just, just kept believing God. And then after, after some time, the, the page beat beeped again. And this time it was my wife and my son and my daughter. They knew by this time it was me in the crash. And they said, Daddy, we love you. And we're praying for you. And when they said that, it made all the difference. And then God did something so wonderful. As I was lying there, uh, I, that plane was actually sabotaged. Let me tell you this. Uh, the plane was actually a sabotage job by the Satanist church. We had three. We had two Satanists, a Satanist high priest and a Satanist high priestess, came to our church on a Sunday night, growling and snarling and biting like dogs and and all of a sudden, I mean, chaos was just hitting all through our church, and it was unreal. And and the Lord spoke to me. He said, put them down. And the Lord said, the devil's place is under your feet. And, you know, back then I was in real good shape, and I backed off across that building, and, and I drop kicked both of them, dropped them, drop kicked them. And uh, 15 men jumped on that man, and and uh, we began to cast the devils out. And his wife was doing the same thing, casting. I mean, she was throwing men and women everywhere, and I, I drop kicked her too. And when, I, when, I, when I drop kicked her, about 20 women jumped on top of her. Anyway, they were delivered that night in that church and set free from those demons. Wow. But the next day, come to find out, he was known as the enforcer for the Satanist movement around the world. The enforcer. He was that the enforcer his, for the Satanist movement around the world. Yes, and yes. you set him and his wife free. Free. Yes, that oh. was amazing. I mean, set free. But because of that, a contract was put out on my life. A contract. I was called and I was placed number two on the Satan Church's hit list. They said around the world, number two on the Satan Church. You were hit list. number two on the hit list around the world. Okay, wow. And so I, I you know, it was so so amazing. As I lay in that wreckage, I began to realize that hey, this was really a sabotage, and it was proven to be a sabotage job, of course. But um, as I lay there, God just they gave proved me, it later. It was a sabotage. Yes, job all, all this they, they, the, the, the instruments had been tampered with. They even disconnected the emergency locating transmitter, which is a device on plane that they could have found me within 20 to 30 minutes at maximum, but they disconnected the emergency locating transmitter. So I was in the wreckage almost 15 hours and just drowning on my own blood. And they were actually, some of them were demons around that plane laughing and mocking. They were saying, I heard them say, we got him. We got him. We got Charlie Fowler. He won't build any more Christian schools. He won't preach any more revivals. He won't build any more churches. We got him. But that's a mistake they made. They started celebrating too early because all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came on me. And I began to speak in tongues. I began to pray and quote that scripture over and over again. I shall not die, but live. I shall not die. But... And as long as I could say the word of God, those demons had to back off. And as I was lying there. You in that could record, hear them and feel their presence oh, there. Oh, in yeah, the... they, were, they were there. I mean, they were there. And, and every, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I quit praying or, or slow down as far as quoting the scripture, you could you could see them coming closer. And I'd quote the scripture again and had to back up. But God was so good, so, so good. As, a, as I lay there, uh, I, I just began to have flashbacks of how God had called me to preach when I was, you know, just turned 17. And I'd used this all those years and uh, when I was in high school. And, and then I called me to preach and went away to Bible college. And then we my most successful revival. My most successful revival was when I went to Fort Myers, Florida and found Sister Fowler. And uh, we've been married now, like I said, going on 54 years. And she's only missed one service in all these all these I love years. Your most successful revival yeah. was the one where you met your wife. She's, I love it. Yeah. She's quite a she's quite a uh, musician, quite a singer, and she loves me. She loves our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. But as I, I lay there, I was praying for for all this, and and 
the Lord did something very special. He sent an angel in the form of a hunter, an angel. And as I was, as I was lying in that wreckage, that, that hunter was comforting me and let me know that he was right there and he was going to be all right. And so this later, hunter just approached you and just started hunter saying- just, The hunter just appeared. It was, it was amazing. I, he came there on the scene. It's like, you know, God is a present help. And God actually sent this hunter in the form of, uh, actually an angel in the form of a hunter. Yeah. And so God me. And the next morning, the next morning, uh, the, you know, the daylight began to come and the storm finally began to break. And, and, and I, and that the, the deputy sheriff tells the story. There was a rescue team of several hundred people trying to find me. And when the deputy sheriff said, told the story of how all night long they'd look for me, and he kept coming to a certain place on the dirt road. They're close to where I'd crashed. And he said, it just felt weird. And he didn't know that's where I'd crashed, but he just said he, every time he came there, it felt weird. And, uh, this was a, a search party person, a police officer. Yes, this was a, this was a deputy sheriff. They were several sheriff, hundred. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he was there, and, and uh, all of a sudden they radioed him one time that they wanted him to get to my get to the bay because they thought they would found part of my plane near the bay. Well, mm -hmm. he cranked and cranked on his four wheel drive vehicle, and it wouldn't start. It wouldn't start, and so all of a sudden he sat there and he turned and looked behind him, and there was an old pickup truck with what appeared to be a hunter sitting in that pickup truck. Now I understand this is this is so powerful. I know this is the truth because I was in the direction of the plane and the hunter was with me. But now all of a sudden the hunter shows up behind him in that pickup truck. And so he goes back and I'll get the hunter to hit me start my vehicle. He got back. The hunter was lying back in the seat with his arms crossed like this. His eyes were closed. Now, all that long, I had my arms crossed around a little pine tree and my eyes were closed, not because I was asleep or unconscious, but because all the blood and the debris and, the, you know, wow. my eyes. But anyway, all of a sudden the hunter set up and pointed to the deputy church and said, what are you doing? The deputy said, we're trying to find Reverend Fowler. He had a plane crash last night. And all of a sudden the hunter pointed and said, he's between here and the creek, pointed right to where I was, right to where I was. The deputy sheriff, I mean, all of a sudden I heard someone running through the woods. And the next thing I knew, the deputy sheriff, he broke out from me and I, <laughs> I raved at him. He scared him so bad, he got drunk and said, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And I was alive, I was alive, I was alive. You know, God has spared my life. And they were so beautiful. He went up to me and said, he said, Reverend Fowler, Reverend Fowler, be real still, be real still. Lots of hips on the way, lots of hips on the way. Uh, and, and he took off and left me. I thought, where's he going? Where's he going? I couldn't find out he was going to get a fire extinguisher because I was lying there in gasoline. I just filled the plane with fuel, so all this gas was all over me and, you know, saturated the ground and, and I was in trouble. But anyway, he gets back wow, to his vehicle. Wow, you could have got caught on fire. Oh, yeah. He got back to his vehicle, though, and, and it cranked right up. He made a trail almost back to where I was. By the time he got to me, though, the, the big helicopter had landed out there and a the rescue team had, had gotten to me. And that big old pine tree was across my chest. Now, this is what's so powerful. The big old pine tree was across my chest. And they were these men were trying to lift that tree off of me, trying to get it off of me. And they couldn't get it to budge. And when that deputy sheriff got back there, you know, he was standing right at my head, the hunter. The hunter was back in my head. And and all of a sudden, was, they, they, were, they were calling for chainsaws. The hunter never touched the tree, but he took three steps back and every step he said, my God, my God, my God. And the third time he said, my God, the pine tree came off of me. Those men had such super, they thought they had supernatural strength or something, but it was the, the angels, supernatural power and God's power that that tree just kept, they, they couldn't believe it. And so they got me out of the wreckage of the plane. Okay, and, okay, hold on. I don't want to pause you, but we do have to take our next break. We'll be right back. All right. my friend all right we got the last part of charlie fowler's interview we're gonna try to get it all in because it's incredible so we're at the wreckage and you're there and then the hunter showed up and he was there and then he was saying my god my god and somehow these men now were able to move this pine tree miraculously off of you and then what happened then they 
rush me, of course, to the helicopter. Matter of fact, let me take a moment and show you some of the pictures yeah. here. Can you see this? Wow. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That's some of the crash scene. Just want you to see what how, how bad, bad that crash was. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Hold that up a little higher. Hold that one up a little higher. I'll see the bottom. Oh, yeah. There's your foot. There's you. Wow. Okay. Oh, and yeah. The big thing I want to show you is this. Uh, just a moment here. I'll show you some of this. Uh, that, you know, this is this is the yoke of a plane that actually broke off. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Some people call it shingle. It actually broke off in my hands on impact. It was terrible. These are parts of my plane here that you can see. Pieces of my plane. I actually, these pieces and other pieces cut hunks of flesh as big as my fist from my, my legs. It was terrible. Now, this will, this will blow your mind. This is my pants I was wearing. You see this big hole right here? Wow. That's where my hip came out. These were hunks of flesh came out of my legs. Wow. I mean, I was messed up bad, you know, real bad. But but yeah. God, you know, God let me get to the hospital. Now, now, give this. The doctors didn't want to touch me. The nurse didn't want to touch me. There was actually people that passed out when they saw me. I was so torn to pieces. My face was torn to pieces. I was messed up bad time. But anyway, they, they didn't even want to touch me. My wife, thank God for my wife, Faith. They told my wife, there's no, no reason to try to put him back together. He's not going to make it through the night. But my wife, her name is Faith. Matter of fact, I, I go to bed with Faith. I get it with Faith every day because her name is Faith. But what's so beautiful is, is she's, a, she's a woman of faith. And she's a doctor. God promised my husband and I many things. He promised so we'd preach around the world, and she said he'd even preach. We'd preach in Africa, and we had been in Africa yet. So he's not through my husband. And uh, by the way, we've preached in Africa now. So so God's yeah, been good. But the the point is, is the doctors did their best to try to put me back together. Some that most all that night in surgery. And uh, what's so beautiful though is the deputy sheriff that had, that that came in with the you know to help find me there. Uh, he got very weird. He went back to the crash site that night with a flashlight. He wanted to find my Bible. He knew I had a Bible, and. Uh, uh, you know, he was looking around. I was going to hear some footsteps. And that same hunter, the same hunter appeared to him again. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to find Reverend Fowler's Bible. Hunter said, don't worry about Reverend Fowler's Bible. That's why he would have been killed. And this is so powerful. All of a sudden, the hunter vanished right before the Debshire's eyes. The, when the hunter vanished, the Debshire fell on his face, gave his heart back to the Lord. Then he rushed to the hospital. He won't tell my wife about the hunter. Now, this is powerful. He just said he couldn't get to my wife because you know, my wife's around so many pastor friends and church friends and all this, but his own mother had a stroke that week. She was paralyzed. Half her body could not speak. Yeah, yeah. So his mom was at the same hospital as you. Same yeah, hospital. She stroke. And, she was not doing well. Yeah. He ran to her room and told her the story of Hunter. And she really set up and began to speak. Healed oh, by the yes, power. That's right. So he told well, her the story about yeah. the Hunter and then his mom was instantly healed. He told he her about the Hunter. The Hunter. She, and it was yeah. the Hunter that caused the guy to just drop to his knees, give his life to yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And then the beautiful part is, is you know, I'm in surgery. And doctors, you know, they they still didn't think I'd live. But and then after some time, I begin to come to, and they said, well, maybe he's gonna live. But then they said, but well, he'll never stand. He'll never take a step. He'll never walk. The nerves of my spine have been destroyed. I mean, I was messed up. But the thing is so beautiful. Summer's this is that weeks and weeks passed. I begged the doctors, please just let me go home. I didn't want to be in the hospital anymore. And the day that I got to go home, they there was kids lining the streets from our schools and other kids and people lying the streets of the highways and they had all billboards had the words and Marquis, welcome home, brother Fowler, welcome home, welcome home. And I got there though to the house and I hear this, this is, this is something. I was in the house and all of a sudden news people show up and uh, they said, Reverend Fowler gets to come home, but the doctors say he'll never stand. He'll never walk. And uh, the next day the papers came out with that. Reverend Fowler is home, but they say he'll never walk. Now, this is something I want to tell you is some many weeks passed, matter of fact, a few months, and it was, depression was so bad. But I wanted so bad, so bad for God to heal me so I could I could preach this miracle testimony. Now, this is something. The day I was going to start the series of messages on faith, I told my church that I wanted to preach on faith. Now here, I'd not even been that been to church yet. I mean, I was I was in a, in in the, in the wheelchair, you know, and uh, on the hospital bed. But the day that I was going to start that message. I was back at the doctor and he was very harsh that day. He said, Reverend, fix it. You're never going to stand. You're never going to, you're never going to speak and, and to be able to preach like that again. You're never going to walk. And, but that night I went to church and I was crying. It was rolling in the wheelchair. I was crying because 
I, I thought, Lord, how can, how can I preach this message on faith when, when people see me in this wheelchair? The next thing you know, Sarah, somehow I was sitting up there in that wheelchair and I quoted my text, now faith, now faith. When I said the words now faith, God spoke to me. He said, Charlie Fowler, if it's not now, it's not faith. God knew my name. And all of a sudden I said, by stripes are healed. By stripes are we're healed. All healed, we're healed, I'm healed. I looked at my congregation and said, all you believe, I'm going to walk tonight. I said, you stand to your feet and begin to praise the Lord. And all of the church, some of people begin to stand. Tears rolling down people's cheeks, hands up, whatever. And once again, I said, by stripes are healed. By stripes we're healed. All here, we're healed, I'm healed. And the next thing you know, I jumped out of the wheelchair and took off down that aisle. Healed by the power of God. And since that time, I've preached thousands of more times. I've flown another 13,000 hours as a pilot. And Come you know, on, so hold on, hold on. Saved. You got to let me soak that in for a second. So told you're never going to walk again. And in an instant, in now, hey, you now faith. wheelchair in front of the whole congregation start running down the aisle. I'm going to cry right now. Jumped out of the wheelchair. took on the, Now, the beautiful thing is this, is we've preached several thousand services since then. Wow. Flown another, over another 13,000 hours since then. Wow. And you know, the amazing thing is people still being healed, people still being saved, people still being set free. God's still working miracles. God is that kind of God. God is that kind of God. And we give God all the praise, all the glory. And you mentioned the book. I trust people want to get this book. They can call you or, or let you know. Or What's it called? Really it's called I Shall Not Die But Live. I Shall Not Die miracle But Live. The Miracle Testimony of Charlie Fowler. Love and, it. Uh, I love it. Let them call you and uh, we'll make that available. Also, yeah, our testimony is on DVD. Reach out to us. This whole testimony is on DVD. It'll bless. God's been good, Summer. He's been so good to us. And the amazing thing is, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I love it. Yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. good. So, I mean, I love how the Lord was like, I'm just going to do a one, two, three punch. Like, not only did he save you, but... He brought an angel that multiple people saw the angel, not just you and oh, the yes, hunter, but several, sorry, you and the deputy sheriff, several people saw this hunter that then didn't show up in any of the photos, right? Right. None of the photos. And even the, even the county sheriff himself over the entire county, uh, he told the whole world on, on interviews, and we got it on TV interviews, that if you don't believe there's a God, you need to be here today. And that yeah. county sheriff got saved through the Holy Ghost. And preached for several years. He went on to be the Lord a couple of years ago. But, you know, before he went on to be the Lord, it was so amazing. He reached so many people that I never could have gone, places I never could have gone and preached to. He won them to the Lord. And then the neat wow. thing about that is they showed some of that during his homegoing service of how he was that night of the crash. He was able to see a miracle take place. And so, you know, God's faithful. God's faithful. Well, the devil meant for bad, God turned around for a whole lot of good. I'm oh, alive. Wow. Shall yeah. not die, but live, declare the I works mean, of the that's, Lord. That's such a miracle story that just impacted an entire community. I just can't even imagine. And then, you, you know, getting out of the wheelchair and all the things. I mean, what a story. And I love your faith, now faith. And I loved your faith to just quote the scripture, quote the scripture. There's power in the word of God. That's it. Power's there. Power's there. And I just, so I just the other day got to meet your grandson and his name is Hunter. Yes, and he was named because of the hunter that God sent, the angel that God sent in the form of a hunter. Our son, Joshua, uh, actually named his son Hunter out of honor and praise to God for sparing his dad. So and so Hunter's, Hunter's a great preacher himself, a great musician, great man of God. Our son is the greatest preacher I know. And so it's oh, just Joshua amazing. Fowler, yeah, that's why he speaks at our events. He's so good. He is oh, so great. We have to wrap up right now, but if you just wanted to lay, lay one message on people about miracles, what would you say to them? I would say he can do it again. He can do it again. What he's done for me, he'll do for others. He's a great, big, wonderful God. He can do it again. So good. I love that. I love that. Well, thanks for being here. I just feel like you're royalty in the supernatural world, and I just adore you, and thanks for taking time to do this interview. Thank you so very much. God bless. And thanks so much for watching, my friends. I just pray that God lights you on fire, that he is still a God who heals. He is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and he still moves mightily in the miraculous and we will see you next time thanks for watching welcome back to giving out loud i'm grace lanny and i'm thrilled to introduce you to entrepreneurs that have a mission so much bigger than their business if you want to amplify your mission and your cause be sure to watch giving out loud right here on zondra tv